we're here at Marketing Profs B2B Forum in the beautiful city of Boston. I'm here with Carlos. And Carlos, why don't you introduce yourself? I'm Carlos Hidalgo. I'm the CEO of Annuitas. We're a demand generation and change management firm headquartered in Atlanta. Uh, we're 11, almost 11 and a half years old. And I've uh, been in the B2B space for quite a long time and work with enterprise B2B clients on uh, developing and implementing a demand generation strategy and also equipping their people from a skill set perspective and really driving change in their organizations. And I love the, the topic demand gen because that is something that we've heard over and over that there's this new alignment with sales and marketing that's kind of happening. We we both kind of, you know, took our balls and went home for a while, right? And then just right. said, we don't need each other. And now it's like, oh, wait, we actually do need each other because customers are harder and harder to reach today. Oh, by far. I mean, if you look at some of the research from CEB that says there's just around seven, 6.8 technically, but around seven people as a buying committee in any kind of strategic B2B purchase on average. Uh, for me, this whole idea of marketing and sales alignment is really a symptom. It's not the problem. We've probably killed six rainforests writing about marketing and sales alignment. And I think if, as marketing and salespeople, we can identify and really align and rally around a common view of the buyer or the customer, the alignment's going to happen automatically. Yeah, absolutely. And it's almost like you're forcing people to dance. That's right. That are measured on different metrics, that have different goals, that have different compensation schedules. Right. And they don't want to necessarily work together. And that persona, that that group of people we're trying to reach, the influencers, the decision makers, and as you said, the committee behind all those purchases are what we're all, it's our key objective of interacting with those people. So yeah, you're right, we, have, we should start working. You know, it, it should be our key objective. What really depresses me, honestly, is when I hear marketing people saying, well, sales is my customer. Mm -hmm. uh, I grew up in that age of marketing when I was early in my career in the software world where sales truly was my customer. Today, the customer is the customer. Mm. Uh, and that seems so basic, but I still see organizations that are trapped in this, well, it's all about sales and disrupting the buying process. And the reality is buyers don't need us like they used to. Mm -hmm. All of us with our smartphones can listen to podcasts. We can do research on purchases. I can find out the good, the bad, and the ugly, not just about your company, but about your sales reps and your personnel. And so if the buyer has changed and advanced and is so sophisticated uh, and has done that rather quickly, we as marketing and salespeople to think we can do the same old tactics the same way, we're deluding ourselves and it's just not feasible. Absolutely. I heard an amazing document or a podcast about one of the, the direct kind of infomercial guys. And he was talking about how they have to change up the timing of mm -hmm. the call to action in those every single time they run it because people will get so used to it right. that they'll do it at 12 minutes and they'll do it at 13 and then they do it at 11 because people are so used to it. And then it's how many marbles can this vacuum suck up? Right. right. And there's a bowling ball. And it's like we keep trying these same tactics over and over and over. And it, Finally, it's going to have to have that giant stop and reassess. You know, I hope so. Uh, I, I look at the research that uh, comes out, and we've done our own research at Annuitas on enterprise demand gen, and we're seeing incremental improvement. I look at the study that just came out with marketing profs and content marketing world, and when you look at we're spending more, we're creating more, we're, we're, we're just throwing everything, you know, cards to the table, you know, going all in on content marketing. But if you look at the effectiveness over the last four studies, it's dropped by 20%. Yeah. And so technically that's the definition of insanity, doing the same <laughs> thing over and over and over and expecting different results. And that's why I believe not, it's just not strategy. You really have to drive change in your organization. And it starts at that cultural level to get everybody on board to say, hey, the old has gone away. We've got to create some new and think about how we structure and how we align our people, process, content, technology, and data all around the buyer so we can serve up that content and give them a better buying experience. And that idea of centering around the buyer, the, the fact that they're on a journey, and that journey is theirs. I don't know yes. how many times I've heard people throw on customer journey as something we should do, and it's like, no, it's not something we should do. It's something our customers are already doing. It's 
it's like t- holding up binoculars and looking at the wildlife and looking at the right. t- what they're doing, right? We want to observe them and then find how we can interact with them, find where their pain points are, actually provide some sort of value for them, you know, heal a symptom, you know, but not just say, when can I sell them? When can I actually take the sheep's clothing off and be the wolf, right? What do I have to do to get you into this car today? Exactly. And what I what I find is that is that marketing and salespeople don't really truly have a view of their buyer. They may know a title, and most of the persona work that I see has it's one page. It has a picture, stock photo, and says this is John, the IT manager. John likes this. Well, how about what content John consumes? Yeah. How about what what channels John uses to go and consume that content? How does John? interact with Sharon, who's his counterpart, but has a completely different view and actually has different steps along that buyer's journey than John does. Mm -hmm. And in addition, what I often see is, well, the buyer's journey is the funnel. And I have yet to ever talk to a B2B buyer who says, I'm in the sales accepted lead stage of my buying process. And so the funnel is a great way to track conversions, but woe to the company who says, this is our buyer's journey. Yeah. It's not that linear. I wish it was, it'd make our jobs a lot easier. I know, it's like all, everyone who thinks that a funnel is actually something that people are, will, will do, um, go actually start a company and you know say, okay, we're gonna buy something big for our marketing. Let's go ahead, let's buy something on the scale of HubSpot. $800 a month. Right. Whoa, right? That's, that's a lot of money, I'm gonna hold off. And so where where am I in that funnel? Well, I got to get to the place where I feel comfortable with $800 a month. Mm -hmm. You can't do anything to influence that. It has to be the business growth. It has to be new people. It has to be maybe my pain where I say, hiring a person is $1,200 a month. HubSpot's $800 a month. Uh, I'm going to go with $800 because I still think I could do it like that. And then now I'm ready. Right. Right. And they could have helped me on the way. And so it's not, it's not anything, you know, they can give me a blog post, they can interact with me, they can help solve other problems. Right. And that's great. That's great brand recognition. I would start to come back to them when I'm ready, but to call me, to email me, to put me part of a drip campaign. We removed one of our, um, our, uh, our providers, our CRM systems, and we were putting another one in place. Well, of course, they're scraping my website and they find that out. And all of a sudden I get into a drip and it says, well, now that you're not using this tool anymore, maybe you'll listen to this tool. And it's like, I'm an agency. Right. Don't look at the tools. Look at what I do and find out, you know, send me some partner program information. Right. And I just think we get it wrong. Well, I, we get it wrong. But if you even if you look, so that's a great example. But even if you look in our consumer lives, whenever we make a big purchase, I don't care if it's a refrigerator, I don't care if it's a car or a washing machine. Do we ever just show up to the department store and say, I want that one? We do our research. Mm-hmm. We maybe say, how can we extend the life of this car, this appliance? And it's even in our consumer lives, do we very rarely have this point A to point B to point C journey? We're back and forth. We're interacting with our significant other on What's the budget look like this month? Can we afford this? Are there any payment plans that, this is what we do in our consumer lives, but somehow as vendors, we think when that consumer goes to work in a B2B environment, all of a sudden, all that logic goes away. You download a piece of content, I'm gonna assault you with a sales pitch. Exactly. It just doesn't work. Your CMO just handed you a global campaign with a short deadline and the request to lead with video. You're given a team of you and, well, you. This campaign is asking for 15 videos that need to create awareness and engagement across multiple online destinations, drive demand and lead gen, and measure performance. Whew, calm down. Everything's going to be okay. We've got you covered. First things first, we're gonna set you up with Video Marketing Suite, which will allow you to access everything you need from a single online location. And it's made for marketers, so you can easily run your campaign yourself. With just a couple of clicks, your videos are uploaded, automatically optimized to work across all screens and devices. You can distribute to your social channels to reach audiences where they are, and then drive them back to a customized branded video portal using Gallery which you can create quickly, easily, and in multiple languages. 
For live events, Brightcove offers an easy to use live streaming interface and after you're done streaming, trim the video and post it on demand for people who missed the event. We'll even help you create interactive elements to optimize video for lead generation. To make sense of all this, our analytics platform tracks a number of statistics in an easy to use UI. This data feeds into leading marketing automation platforms. You can see who watched and for how long and what other content they consumed. Then you know what to create and who it's for. We're Brightcove. We'll help ensure that your video marketing is a success. It's the, it's gated, and so that means that they must want to buy from us. It's right. like you threw a very nice carrot out there, and you said, "Give me your email address as a as a payment." Well, that's that's information I shared. I get it. Right. But once you get me into that cycle, well, I didn't welcome that. And so, how much disservice are you actually doing? And, and I. I think marketing should start measuring the anti-patterns, right? The, the things that we're doing that are really, really bad versus the things that we're doing that are really, really good because those are the things that are going to cause the most impact. Well, you know, you touch on the, the whole measurement thing. It, it's, it's such a struggle. Uh, I was with a small group of CMOs yesterday in Vegas, and I asked everybody, I said, how are you doing with analytics? And there were literally like nervous laughs around the table. And so when I think about what are we measuring, in our study, we showed that obviously demand gen is one of the top priorities for these companies. But then when you ask them what's one of their key measurements, it's website visits. Mm -hmm. So we're not even aligning our metrics to our overall goals and objectives. And so there's a huge disparity there. And so I do think a lot of marketers start to throw up their hands where that's happening and in the meantime, the CEOs and CFOs are saying, no, no, you're responsible for a revenue number. Mm -hmm. I can't track a revenue number off of the number of people who come to my website. No. It's an engagement metric, but it's by no means the metric that the business needs to see. Yeah, absolutely. And who, you know, being able to interact with the sales team and figure out how that, when you started engaging with that person, how did they hear about us? And starting once you start pulling up some of that data, you'll realize that there is no funnel, right? Right. It's like, oh, you attended a session two years ago by one of the founders, and that's what brought you in, not all the different content efforts mm -hmm. that we've done, right? And that's like serendipitous interactions with people is what causes a lot of business to happen. Um, a absolutely. And I, I do think we should be able to measure content performance. What content pieces in our end-to-end -end perpetual program are performing? What channels are performing? I remember long before there was all this technology, when I was at a software company, we did take it, all we did, we only had the time and the team to take a look at the ROI from events. And one of the bigger events that was a traditional uh, must attend, we looked over the last two years, we got zero from it. So we canceled it. Yeah. And there was only one sales guy who was honest and said, we can't cancel that, it's in Vegas. And so I appreciated his honesty, but now we have the tools, we have the methodology, we have so many things at our disposal. At our disposal. And honestly, it's depressing for me that we still have organizations who are saying we can't do this, we can't yeah. measure effectively. But then you look at the tools and especially, you know, how to connect a lot of these tools in a digital experience are the tag managers, right? Mm -hmm. And you've got the open end spectrum where it's the free Google tag manager, and then you've got the Adobe ones, and then you've got all these other ones, and you get in there and all of a sudden it's just, everyone wants to geek out about the code behind the scenes. Right. You're like, close that door, right? <laughs> this is not the conversation we're trying to have. We're having an integration conversation that most people aren't ready for. So let's right. start to look at goals. Let's start to look at the ways we can measure those, those values, go back, and so when we do open up the nerd box and get into, <laughs> you know, the JavaScript and the variables and the, all the pixels and all that stuff. We can truly have some sort of measurement we want to get out of that to win. Yeah. And I, 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 I what I call that is the shiny new toy of technology. Uh, talking with a prospect a couple of weeks ago who was telling me our data is a mess. It's spread all over multiple platforms. We don't know our buyers. We don't have persona work. We don't know what kind of content. And then a follow-up email, oh, we're looking at this technology. And I'm like, what's that gonna be, the 15th one in the stack? You still don't have a basis for that technology mm -hmm. and you keep going after that silver bullet that doesn't exist. And so I think as marketers, we have to really understand strategy first, then technology serves to enable that strategy. And I think a lot of MarTech stacks would be reduced.
Today, real time is the only time that counts. To stay relevant, you have to stay ahead. Your customers want the right information, right now, wherever they are. So how do you meet the demands of today's customers? By marketing and context. Context accounts for a customer's interaction with your brand. So each touch builds on the next, creating more meaningful experiences for your customers. At Sitecore, we call this context marketing. To do it well, you need marketing technology that has three things. Contextual intelligence, content management, and omni-channel automation. Contextual intelligence gives you the information you need about your consumers. So the content you manage is more relevant and is automatically delivered wherever your customers are. The Sitecore Experience platform was built for context marketing, so you can create a more personalized customer experience. Demand more from your marketing technology. Demand more from marketing. Own the experience. Sitecore. And it would also help if we actually had a system of record too. That Absolutely. Fighting between CRM and CMS and, and every vendor you go with is either strong in one or strong in the other and they don't talk well together. Right. And it's like it's almost like we need to strike as marketers and say, you guys go off and learn how to be friends because we're not solving this problem with twenty different platforms. Well, and, and a lot of enterprise companies have multiple platforms. And, and you talked about CRM and CMS. You throw marketing automation in there. Mm -hmm. So which one is it? And then if sales and marketing aren't on that same page and are aligned around the buyer, sales is doing whatever they want in the CRM system. And is that feeding back? I, I'm still astonished at how many marketing automation systems and CRM systems aren't bidirectionally synced. There's either no sync and it's a manual upload or there's a one-way sync. And I'm like, do you want a full view of your buyer yeah. from the minute they come in until the minute they close and then thereafter? How come you haven't done this? Yeah. And it's again, it's, it's like fundamental stuff. Like this is a football. You'd think 12 years into this, we, we would at least be a little bit more advanced. And I, I'm not a doomsayer. I think there are companies that are doing that really well. Mm -hmm. But I still think the majority the average, is saying, yeah. how do we do this? Exactly. And you wouldn't, you'd never walk into a manufacturing plant and just see some guy randomly putting stuff together and walking around. He's like, oh, today I felt like putting on tires. Right. So I'm going to go put on tires. And exactly. And another guy like, what are you building? Oh, I, I like tricycles. So I'm building a tricycle today. You would never, they all have systems in place and they all tweak those systems on a very incremental and decided, you know, Friction happens, heat happens, and so things are, but somebody's in there measuring. The engineers are in there tweaking things. Yes. And marketing, we don't have the marketing engineer, the guy in there that's looking at the full system and saying, let's tweak this process ever so slightly and really come up with that process that we can actually establish and, and go out of and, and know what we're producing. And I think when you do measurement the right way and you continually optimize your programs, that gives you the insight to say, what levers do we need to pull? Either create new content, redefine a little bit of the strategy, adjust our, our lead management process, or maybe we just have to tweak the technology a little bit differently. Exactly. And so without that vision facing back a little bit, it's going to be hard to do. So if people wanted to get a hold of you, because I know that if you're listening to the show and you're just nodding your head saying yes, huh. right? They probably want to call on a strategist like you to actually help them come out and, and reconsider some of these efforts. Well, you can visit us at annuitas.com. It's A-N-N-U-I-T-A-S.com. Uh, I'm very active on social media. Most, uh, most of the time on Twitter at, at C-A Hidalgo, H-I-D-A-L-G-O, or just Carlos Hidalgo at annuitas.com. Awesome. Well, thank you for your time today. It's been actually a really fun conversation. I've enjoyed it. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. Awesome.